Every field of life, technology is moving it on and making it bewildering for us. But the key thing is you've got to go with change. When change occurs, you can't be sitting there resisting it like a fool. You can't be holding on to the past, rooting yourself and going, oh, things were better. Things were better. In all fields of life, immigration, things change. This country gives itself an aneurysm over immigration. You handle multiculturalism better than any society in the world at the moment. You are so good. You give shit back to cultures they never knew they had. <laughs> There are a billion people in India going, what's a Balti exactly? <laughs> Things change, you can't be holding on to it. Nostalgia is heroin for old people. That's all it is. <laughs> going, oh, things are better in the old days. <laughs> they weren't better. You couldn't turn on a light during the 40s in this country without the Luftwaffe bombing the shit out of it. <laughs> That's not better. For Christ's sake, just because you were younger and getting laid more often doesn't mean the place is better off, right? <laughs> Ridiculous notions like that, like, but stuff changes. Attitudes change, values change. Even as a comedian, you occasionally come across something, you make a joke that, you know, gets you into trouble because the attitudes have changed. I did a joke last year, and this is not a good joke. I have no excuse. It's a terrible joke, right? <laughs> I'm just offering as Exhibit A. It was about the musical Billy Elliot. Mm. And what was the composer's inspiration for the music? The joke was, Elton John, do you think he saw a little of himself in Billy Elliot? <laughs> I know, it was rubbish. I didn't mean it as an attack on Elton John or as an attack on the gay community. I meant it as yet another joke in the glorious tradition of jokes involving the word in. As in, <laughs> do you have any Irish in you? Would you like some? <laughs> but instead, we got a letter of complaint from Peter Tatchell and the gay rights campaign group Outrage who said that I was a disgrace and should never be allowed to work again. Uh, and the joke was, contributed to a culture of violence against gay men in Britain. Those of you unfamiliar with the work of Outrage, the previous target of one of their campaigns was Robert Mugabe. <laughs> and now me. <laughs> and the thing is, your initial reaction when somebody does a complaint like that is to get, ah, you know, is to get all tough and go, ah, it's only a joke for Jesus' sake, relax, right? Swiftly followed by loftier arguments about civil rights and comedy's obligation to say the difficult thing and freedom of speech which is a fairly lofty point to bring in, to back up something as bad as that joke about Billy Elliot, right? You wouldn't go to Strasbourg, to the European Court of Human Rights, <laughs> with that as your argument. Oh, my lords, my ladies of the court. Elton John, you think he's all little of himself in Billy Elliot? <laughs> <laughs> Try the fish, I'm here all week. Thank you very much. <laughs> And in fact, if a gay man ever walked up to me and said, do you know what, that's just another joke about how we're supposed to touch kids, and we don't, there's no paedophilia homosexuality relation at all, I'd have no argument with that whatsoever, right? Because frankly, if you don't change your attitudes when you realise you've screwed up, then I might as well just go and play golf with Jim Davidson on a Saturday morning <laughs> and go, Jesus, Jim, I'm getting awful trouble off the queers at the moment, yeah? <laughs> What seems to be the problem, Dara? Ah, they can't take a feckin' joke. They take a cock up their arse, but they can't take a joke. <laughs> that was intended ironically, by the way. <laughs> and I, some people think that's very politically correct of me, but then I'm Irish, right? And of all the people who've benefited from a good dose of political correctness on this island, it's been the Irish. Remember the good old days with the jokes about how stupid we were? And then a memo went around sometime in the 80s where you all went, oh, Jesus, we're not doing jokes about the Irish anymore. And you went, OK, fine. And you just stopped. And thank you very much. A bit overdue, but thanks very much nonetheless. Because <laughs> we didn't really enjoy that kind of stuff. Like, and it's, it's good that we don't get that kind of reputation. Just so you know, there are still plenty of stupid people dotted around Ireland, but you're not allowed to talk about them. So <laughs> There was a fire engine called out last year because there was a cat stuck up a tree in Limerick. Lads drove out, took the cat down, gave it back to the old woman. She said, lads, will you have a glass of whiskey? This is a completely true story. The lad said, we will, of course, have a glass of whiskey. The other crew are on at the moment. It's fine. So she, they had the glass of whiskey. They had another glass of whiskey. The whole town came out, had a bit of crack with the fire engine. Life was good. Eventually, they said, listen, we better go back now. They waved goodbye to the village. They waved goodbye to the old woman. They got back into the fire engine, drove off, ran over the fucking cat. <laughs> Completely true story, and you're not allowed to tell it. It's brilliant, isn't it? Because <laughs> the thing is, the joy of it is, like, whatever. Of the Irish people, where are the Irish people again? Yeah. Who's the most recent immigrant among you? <laughs> Let's go back. Who, who's only been out of the. Who, where, where you, how long are you out of the country, sir? Two weeks. Two weeks. 
That's pretty recent as an immigrant, it has to be said, right? The thing about Ireland is, Ireland is a bit of cash. We've changed in our... Oh, we've changed. Oh, this is our favourite line about ourselves. Oh, two weeks, you can never go back. You won't recognise the place when you go back. It's changed. Oh, those two weeks, the country's gone so much different. It's, you wouldn't recognise it. You can never go back. We're loving this about ourselves because we finally got a bit of cash in our pockets and we love the notion, oh, we're not the same place we were. We've lost our soul, we've lost our spirit. We're exactly the same age as we always were, right? But with a bit of cash. There's no change. Well, there's one change in Ireland. Baguettes. <laughs> there's a lot more baguettes in Ireland <laughs> than there ever were when I was growing up there. <laughs> Even in the two weeks since you left, my friend, that place has gone baguette crazy. <laughs> you can't move for baguettes. When I was there, a sandwich was a sandwich. Bit of bread, bit of ham, bit of cheese. Here's another bit of bread. That's a sandwich. Now it's second baguette in every direction. <laughs> but I'll say this for the Irish. We do baguettes in a way that no French person has ever done baguettes. <laughs> we have a unique take on the baguette that the French could only dream of. No French person in history has ever walked into a baguetteria or whatever the hell the name of the shop is. <laughs> What's the name of the place that sells baguettes? A baguette shop. Yeah, I meant in Paris. <laughs> you shop de baguette. What's it called? It's called a boulangerie, of course it is. In fact, I know that. I just love getting people to shout out boulangerie in the middle of a gig, because it's the sexiest kind of lingerie. <laughs> what are you wearing tonight? My boulangerie! Uh, oh, I love the way the tits light up. I know. It's great. <laughs> no one has ever walked into a boulangerie and gone, je veux une baguette. And they've gone, ah, oh, tu veux une baguette? Nous sommes une boulangerie. Nous avons beaucoup de baguettes. Qu'est-ce que tu veux dans la baguette? Peut-être le jambon ou le fromage? No Parisian has ever gone, no, je veux pas le jambon, ni le fromage. Je veux un full Irish breakfast. <laughs> we, we exactly hash browns, beaucoup de hash browns. <laughs> Unless you're not, any baked beans, aussi, beaucoup de baked beans, right? <laughs> now I wrap it in cling film, I'll put it in the passenger seat of the car. <laughs> <laughs> But the fact that in Ireland we went all the way from being stupid ones to being Nobel laureate, river dancing, chorus, whatever that we are at the moment, right? These tags are so arbitrary, they're so randomly assigned, whatever. That, and as a comedian, if you work for a while, you spot that there are just buttons you can press with regard to the peoples of the world, right? Because we basically, all of us have a list in our head of the countries we know, and we've one or two words beside to describe the people in them, right? Because we're busy people, we can't have fully formed impressions of all the people in the world, right? So we, it narrows down to a couple of very common phrases all the time. Right? My friend from California, you may wish to block your ears just for a tiny moment at this stage. Right? <laughs> I'll give you an example. If I said to you, Americans, uh, what are they like as people? Americans are <laughs> fat and <laughs> stupid. Those are the two things. <laughs> Every gig I do, fat and stupid. The French are <laughs> arrogant and <laughs> smelly. That's it. That's <laughs> Every gig, let's say two words. The Dutch are stoned, right? That's that. <laughs> it's harsh, but like, you know, and clearly these things aren't true. But the joy of this thing is you can do that for a few different countries, right? But then it peters out quite dramatically when you get a little bit outside of Europe, right? Or I said the English speak. Let's face it, none of us as a crowd would go, Slovenia? Ah, joys, it's those feckers. Ah, sure, they're, you know, uh, you know, rampant and, you know, and well read. I don't, this, we don't have. <laughs> Phrase for all these people. All oh, the Tongans are tall and, and well mannered. It just it, <laughs> we don't have phrase for all the countries of the world. And there's loads of obscure countries in the world that we know nothing about, right? So feck it. We should just make shit up. <laughs> Every five years in the UN there should be a draw, like a giant bow, like the FIFA draw. And the ambassador from a country, name for me a very obscure country. Cork. Cork. Right? <laughs> Terribly obscure country, not legally based on anything, by the way. More obscure than that. Well, give me a name of an obscure country. Swaziland, perfect example. The Swaziland ambassador has to walk down and rustle the paper up and holds it up, and it just says, shite at small talk. <laughs> and then for the next five years, every time you hear about Swaziland, you go, oh, jeez, a shite at small talk. The Swaziland ambassador goes, oh. Gosh, I met a lad from Swaziland. I said, how's your wife? He said, she's very dry. <laughs> You mean she's a very dry sense of humour? That's not what I mean at all. <laughs> but I shite at small talk. <laughs> and you can just make this stuff up, for God's sake. Another obscure country. 
Angola, perfect example. Who among us truly knows about the Angolans? Who among us has studied, has lived, has traveled? Who among us has seen from the passenger seat of a jet plane what the people of Angola are truly like? One man, one man knows what the Angolans, I'm working up to you by the way here, Scott. <laughs> He could describe for us in a couple of words the characteristic, the not physical, personality traits, come up with a couple of ones now, that perfectly sum up the Angolans. Scott, in your wide-ranging RAF-based <laughs> knowledge, the Angolans are... Angry. Angry and... Violent. Vo angry and violent. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a huge, broad spectrum of personality. <laughs> Luckily, they combine their anger with a bit of violence, so it all works out well for them. Let's try one more. What did you say? Oh, Vanu Vanuatu. Very good. You're loving that, aren't you? You're very happy you shouted at Vanuatu. The people of Vanuatu are... Vacuous. Vacuous. Good answer. I like the way you're thinking here, right? <laughs> Vacuous and... Unknown. Unknown. <laughs> the people of Vanuatu are vacuous and unknown. <laughs> Surprised they've remained so unknown, given that when you finally get to know them, there's nothing there. <laughs> you should see them stuck on a lift with the Angolans. Oh, the Angolans are kicking off in a huge way. But the Vanuatu people have no opinion to offer in the situation. I know it's slow, but is it? I don't know. I didn't think there, but the whole thing. Okay. And you're kind of wondering, Dar, what's the point of this? The point of this is, in a week's time, there will be a news report where they say, and there is a situation brewing at the moment in Vanuatu, and you're going to go, oh, those vacuous pricks. <laughs> so, of course, there's a situation there. Should nobody know anything about them? Should they keep themselves to themselves so much? Do you know what they should, they should send in the feckin' Angolans? They'll sort them out. <laughs> They'll rip through them like a dose of salt, the Angolans. They're livid, livid about anything, whatever.